So when we're training that hip hinge, it's important that we get some feel for the movement, okay? And it's a, you might be able to do that weight as bow and use the wall. As you see in my hand now, okay, I've actually got a, a training stick here, but it could be a broom handle, it could be a dowel, it could be anything, it might be an old piece of piping. And the things we look at doing here to make sure we're creating that nice neutral spine that you might hear about, okay, or flat back as people call it, or different cues that you'll hear your coach say, is actually there's a three point connection part. Now, the great thing of doing this is obviously you can feel where you should be. And it's a nice way of doing, you can do this by yourself. I'm gonna show you first off by holding it myself there. What we're gonna be doing is the sacrum, that lower back there, okay, the upper back, as I say, okay, I'm assuming all the scat, the shoulder blades there, and then the back of the head. So if you look at here now, Rob can connect there, those three points, if they're not touching, so if Rob was to bow his head down too much now, as you can see, that's gonna push that upper back, and we're actually losing two points of connection there. Now this lower part comes off, and the upper part. If the head is right the way up, and you see this quite a lot, over, overextending, once we talked about that arch there, you lose that connection from the upper back. So we wanna make sure we're trying to keep that three-point connection. By doing so there, we've got a nice neutral spine, as you'll hear coaches talk about, or a nice flat back, but we're embracing there. Now, there'd be probably a little bit more tension if we were holding onto a bar or weight, but as you, without actually doing it over-exaggerating, Rob is actually creating tension on there. I can actually squeeze the muscle, you can see it. He does it naturally, which sometimes is actually a hard thing to do when we're teaching and coaching, because what most people do is quite relaxed in this form, and as soon as we relax out, okay, you can kind of see we start to lose a bit of the, the tension, a lot of the area, and when we come to doing movements, it's not a great place to be. You want to be nice and secure through lifting. Now. That's me holding onto it. Rob might be at home with his broom, okay, after he's done a bit of cleaning at home, and he goes, right, you know what, I'm gonna be a wally in the kitchen, I'm gonna practice my hinge, because it's a great thing to be doing, it's practical, it's the best thing I can do. As you can see there, just put in there, you can work through, stand up, making sure though, when you are doing this, try to focus on actually squeezing the hamstrings and the glutes on the way up, get into good habits, okay? It's all well and good having this form, but if you're just doing this and not actually working, a lot of the time when we're hinging, we're trying to work on that posterior chain, things like RDA, deadlifts, you'd be doing these moves quite a lot. You wanna be making sure that we're getting that stretch, soft on the knees as he's doing again, and then squeezing through. So, this can say can be anything really, okay? It could be a, a broom handle, all the basic things you might have at home, but it's a great way of practicing. If you're to do that, if you're someone who struggles with creating that neutral spine or getting a good position for bent over rows or deadlifts, then get at home, try this, 10, 15 reps, multiple times a day, you're gonna get better.